Hello, good morning, and welcome to this date in history, also known as TDH. This show is all about the events that occurred to date in years past, both recognized by actual historians, but mainly things that we personally find intriguing for us to bring to you. The sources of this information come from the Smart Device application, Today in History, What Happened Today in History, Historical Calendar, and the website on this day.com. For links to those sources, the music, and anything else potentially interesting, check the underbar in the description below. Anyway, I am A.O. Xander, and you, viewer, are you. Today is Tuesday's Day, also known as Tears Day, also known as Tuesday, August 16th, 2022. So what happened on this date in history, you may ask? Well, we will start in 1501. Michelangelo was awarded the contract to create his statue of David at Florence Cathedral by the overseers of the Office of Works, the Operai of the Duomo. All right. And that statue is, is like... 15 feet tall, it's big. Like, uh, I, I already knew this, but I had a former friend, uh, Muffin, actually um, went to Italy for a couple weeks, if you remember that, and he went and he saw the statue, and it's a big statue. So, uh, Also in 1501, Michelangelo was awarded the contract to create his statue of David at Florence Cathedral by the... Wait, didn't we just... Yeah. Yeah, the same exact post twice, but then they... It's two different... Uh, show pictures. Huh. That's weird. Moving on up into 1513, Battle of the Spurs at uh, Gwengate, which is now Gate. Henry the uh, Eighth of England and Holy Roman Emperor Maximilian the First defeated France. Hmm. Jumping on up into 1570, King Henry of, uh, no, King of Hungary, uh, John Sixmit uh, Zapoyai signed this, a secret treaty with Holy Roman Emperor Maximilian the Second. Huh. So Maximilian the first here, and then the second here. Well, the Maxes are up to something. 1812. General Hull surrendered Detroit and Michigan Territory to British forces under the command of Major General Sir Isaac Brock, who captured Fort, uh, Fort Detroit with the help of indigenous warriors led by Tecumseh. Hmm. Oh, Tecumseh was a Native American. Okay. Well, that makes sense. But, but you know, like, you know, William Tecumseh Sherman. So I wonder if, if his middle name is uh, named after that guy. That's interesting. 1858, Britain's Queen Victoria telegraphed U.S. President James Buchanan first time by transatlantic telegraph table. He replied, It is a triumph more glorious because far more useful to mankind than who uh, than was ever won by conquer on the field of battle. End quote. That's, uh, that's a mouthful right there. 1861, U.S. President Abraham Lincoln prohibited Union states from trading with the Confederacy. Here we go. Well, yeah. Uh, well, that would make sense. Like, weren't we already at war? Like, Civil War. When did Civil War start? Uh, April 12, 1861. So, it had already... It's going. So, I'm surprised it took this long for that to, to go... Eight years later, in 1869, during the War of the Triple Alliance, a Paraguay battalion made up of children was massacred by the Brazilian army during the Battle of Acosta Nu. E. Uh, well, I mean, you know, they have weapons, they can do harm. You know, you gotta, you gotta treat a child with a gun, you know, with the same, you know, respect, you know, that you would with a grown-up with a gun. Perhaps even more so because children, you know, are more, like, liable to just, you know, open fire. They don't have the concept of mortality, you know, really. So, jumping up into 1880, the French state commissions sculptor uh, Auguste Rodin for a large sculpted doorway, the Gates of Hell, for the proposed uh, Musée des Arts Décorates. Gates of Hell. So, Auguste... Auguste Rodin. So... Here we go. Images. Ooh. Wow. That's uh, one hell of a doorway. So, dang. What else happened on to date? In 1891, President Benjamin Harrison attended the dedication of the Bennington Battle Monument in Bennington, Vermont. Now, what does the Bennington Battle Monument even look like? So let's take a look at that. So. Bennington Battle Monumento. Huh. So it's, um... 
just a spire type thing. That's a pretty tall monument, though. Wow. Huh. Bennington. What was the, uh, the Bennington battle? Let's, uh... Let's check out this Wikipedia, because this looks like a significant battle. Um... Okay, so it was, uh, during the Civil War. Not the Civil War, the, the Revolution. Uh... So there's not a lot of people killed, but it's, uh, oh, up in, uh, New York. I'm gonna post the link in the underbar to this wiki that I'm looking at here. And post it. Alright. Let's, uh, get off of the Bennington battle for a little bit. 1908, the Committee of Union and Progress, the Young Turks, announced a program for reforms and respect for the rights of all within the Ottoman Empire, regardless of race or religion. These are not the same Young Turks and news group that we know of today, if they're still around. Um, I've heard nothing but bad things about them as of late. So, you know, I don't know if they're still around or if anybody even pays attention to them, but that's not the same Young Turks as these guys here. This is uh, completely and totally different. And 1924, U.S. National Championship Women's Tennis at Forest Hills, New York. Defending champion Helen Wills Moody beat seven-time winner Mola Bajerstedt Mallory 6-1, 6-3. Yeah, look at that hat. And she has a uh, her head looks like a pea, you know, like perfectly round. Three years later, 1927, Yankee slugger Babe Ruth teed off Tommy Thomas in the fifth running or fifth inning uh, to hit first home run uh, out of Comiskey Park in Chicago. New York defeated White Sox eight to one. Damn, that's a mop. 1940, Pioneering Blood for Britain program sending blood plasma for World War II wounded from the U.S. headed by Charles R. Drew officially began in Britain. Alright, well look at that. Uh, the U.S. Uh, given, li literally giving our lifeblood to the Allied cause while we were still neutral. You know, this was before December 7th, 1941. But in 1942, British Prime Minister Winston Churchill traveled back to Cairo from Moscow. One more year later, 1943, Bulgarian Tsar Boris III visited Adolf Hitler. All right. 1953, Shah of Persia Mohammad Reza Pahlavi and Princess Soraya fled to Baghdad and Rome. I think respectively, or maybe they both fled to Baghdad and then Rome. I don't know. Maybe one traveled to one. I don't know. How, you know whatever. They they left. Cowards. 1961, Martin Luther King Jr. protested for black voting rights in Miami, Florida. Good. You know. 1962, Ringo Starr replaced Pete Best as Beatles drummer. First official concert two days later. Oh, man. So, uh, yeah, poor Pete Best. Helped him rise to fame and then couldn't uh, ride the train. That's not cool. 1969, second day of the Woodstock Festival in Bethel, New York. Performers included Santana, John Sebastian, Mountain, Grateful Dead, Creedence, Clearwater Revival, Janis Joplin, Sly, and the Family Stone, The Who, and the Jefferson Airplanes. Or Jefferson Airplane. I don't know why I, I misread that, but... Yeah, so, uh, unlike yesterday, I recognized, like, about half of that lineup right there, you know? Santana, of course, Grateful Dead, uh, Janis Joplin, I've heard recently, uh, The Who, Jefferson Airplane, you know? Anyway, 1970, during the PGA Championship Men's Golf Southern Hills Country Club, Dave Stockton won first of two PGA Championships by two shots from Bob Murphy and Arnold Palmer. Uh, Arnold Palmer, I can vote for one now, but I actually have some cola. Might actually make some kilk, which is cola milk. You know, you have a glass, half milk, half cola, mix it together, you know. It's, it's not bad, you know. It's not the best drink ever, but it's, not, it's, it's okay, you know. 1974, Ramones concert debut, New York City, GBGBs. Okay. 1975, singer Peter Gabriel announced his departure from the rock group Genesis. 1985, CBS's premiere of its TDV adaptation of Death of a Salesman, starring Dustin Hoffman and John Malkovich. Fun. Cool. One year later, 1986, Madonna's True Blue album went number one for five weeks and her single. All right. 365 days later, 1987, Bon Jovi released their third album, Slippery When Wet, Billboard's top-selling album of 1987. Cool. 
cool. You know? Well, I guess uh, he's not abrasive, you know? So. 1990, South African President F.W. de Klerk and Nelson Mandela held emergency talks in Pretoria about increasing violence in Soweto. Yep. That's, uh... When was, uh... When was he jailed? Like, he was jailed in, uh... Like... 60-something, or right? We have the technology. When was Nelson Mandela uh, uh, jailed? Ah, oh, 1961. Yeah, so I was right. Uh, oh, 1961, 62, what? He was arrested for treason. Uh, treason. Um, 1964 through 82. So that's when he was incarcerated. Alright. I apologize, my nose is just like, it's just going today. Moving on up into 1991, John Gutfried announced his resignation as chief executive of Solomon Brothers amid illegal bidding scandal. Hmm, guilty as hell. No. Also in 1991, U.S. President George Herbert Walker Bush declared recession was near an end. Yep, you know, at least, uh, you know, even, even like, you know, it doesn't matter, right, left, conservative, you know... Uh, uh, liberal, Democrat, Republican, doesn't matter. Two different wings on the same bird, my friend. Two different animals, you know, same crap. So, but at least, uh, at least the right, you know, cares about something, you know, more than themselves. 1992, British Williams driver Nigel Mansell finished second in Hungarian Grand Prix at the, uh, Hungaroring to clinch his first Formula One World Drivers Championship. Nice. Got some more sports history in 2002 when Cristiano Ronaldo, at the age of 18, made his debut for Manchester United and the Premier League in a 4 to none home victory over Bolton Wanderers. Good. I'm sorry about the nose. 2008, American swimmer Michael Phelps won his seventh of eight gold medals at the Beijing Olympics when he took the 100-meter butterfly in Olympic record 50.58 seconds, defeating Milorad Kavic of Serbia by 0.01 seconds. Wow. Wow. Like, that's, that's, that's one one-hundredth of a second. It's not one-tenth of a second. One one-hundredth. That's, that's incredible. 2008 as well, British sailor Ben Angsley convicting the, uh, or cons convincingly won the Finn class at the Beijing Olympics, his third gold medal in as many games. Nice, so he's just like slamming it out of the park right there. 2008 as well, Jamaican sprinter Eurasian Bolt set new world record of 9.69 seconds to win the coveted uh, 100 meter gold medal at the Beijing 2008 Summer Olympics. Ah, so it's, uh, it's Olympics time, looks like. Oh, uh, here we go. 2012, WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange was granted political asylum by Ecuador. That's right. It was, a, uh, it was Ecuador. And then the United States government did some stuff to, uh, you know, screw around with Ecuador. And then, uh, they're like, oh, hey, if you want us to stop that, just, you know, give us Julian. And they eventually handed him over. And this poor guy was just all disheveled and everything. And we haven't heard anything about him since. He's probably dead or being tortured, you know, slowly to death. Poor guy. 2016, When the Leaves Broke, a documentary directed by Spike Lee uh, of effects of Hurricane Katrina on New Orleans premiered at New Orleans Arena. 2017, Emma Stone is the year's uh, highest paid actress with $26 million, according to Forbes. Alright, that's a lot of money making a year. Also in 2017, Philippine police killed 32 people in raids near Manila, most deadly night in President Rodrigo Duarte's war on drugs. Yep. You, know, uh, you, go, you go to war on drugs, you're going to lose. Drugs always win. Always. 2018, Pope Francis and the Vatican issued statement in support of the 300 victims of predator priests in Pennsylvania. Ooh. Yeah. So, but uh, they're supporting the victims. So, that's good. But that's still... I went ooh because like that's that shouldn't happen. That's a lot of victims, you know. Also, 2018, Scarlett Johansson was the world's best-paid actress of the year, earning 40.5 million dollars according to Forbes. So, 
We went from 26 million in 2017 to 45 and a half in 2018. So in one year, wow. 2020, largest ever demonstration in Belarus as 100,000 people gathered in Minsk to protest uh, against controversial election results and regime of Alexander Lukashenko. Uh, Lukashenko, okay. Alexander Lukashenko, whatever. Uh, also, 2020, this was just two years ago, actually, World Snooker Championship, Crucible Theater in Sheffield. Englishman Ronnie O'Sullivan won his sixth world title with an 18-8 win over countryman Ky uh, Kyron Wilson. Snooker. Huh. And then 2021, just last year, U.S. President Joe Biden said, quote, I stand squaringly behind my decision, end quote, to withdraw U.S. troops from Afghanistan despite sudden collapse of the country to the Taliban. Oh, yeah, so that happened uh, last year. It's been a year already since that. Just awful. So anyway, uh, before we go on to person desk, were any uh, articles that you, you know, uh, that you found, you know, interesting more than most? You know, like, um, you know, let's go back to the, to the beginning here. You know, Statue of David. Okay, you know, that was, uh, uh, to, uh, to create the statue. So, you know, this was not when it was made. This was when it was greenlit to be made. You know, that was interesting, you know, going on from there. Anyway, moving on into bursts, let's uh, see here. We have T.E. Lawrence. Oh, Lawrence of Arabia, born on this date in 1888. He was a British author, soldier, and diplomat famous for his uh, liaison role in Arabia during the First World War. Born in Tremadog, uh, Cairnarfonshire, Wales, dying in 1935. Wow. Yeah, like, you know, like the, the things this guy did, you know, raiding the Turkish trains in the middle of the Sahara, you know, blowing up uh, central power ships in the ports of Alexandria. Wow, just crazy stuff. If I have the second thing right, if I have the first thing right, I don't really know much about the, uh, the exploits. I just know you know, he, did, he did a lot of stuff, so... 1913, we have uh, Menachem Begin was the sixth prime minister of Israel uh, from 1977 through 80 and then 81 through 83. Uh, he was born in Brest, Belarus, Russian Empire, dying in 1992. A Ruski. That's not good. And uh, 1930, Tony Traverts was a U.S. tennis player, Wimbledon of 1955, U.S. Open 1953. And 55, French Open 1954 and 55, born in Cincinnati, Ohio, died just last year, 2021. Oh man. Uh, let's see here, what else do we have? James Cameron, James Cameron, James Cameron. 1954, he is a Canadian film director and writer, Titanic and Avatar, born in Capus Kang, Ontario. And Avatar, the, the large blue people, the, the, the Smurfs, apparently, according to South Park. Not uh, The Last Airbender. Two completely different avatars. 1958, Madonna uh, Cocoon uh, was, is a U.S. singer and actress like a virgin born in Bay City, Michigan. Yeah, I, I don't think she's a virgin. So, 1962, Steve Carell, U.S. actor and comedian, The Office, born in Concord, Massachusetts. Yeah, he was like the boss of the, that branch of the company. So in in uh, The Office, at least. Uh, Taika Waititi, 1975, uh, is a New Zealand uh, film director, Boy Thor Ragnarok, born in Rau, uh, Kokor, New Zealand. Alright, that's some wild hair. He kind of looks like uh, the Collector uh, from Guardians of the Galaxy. Moving on into deaths here, we have John Pemberton, died on the state in 1888. He was a US, or an American pharmacist, the inventor of Coca-Cola, died of stomach cancer at 55. Yeah, you know, if the inventor of a drink that becomes popular, obviously he drinks it, he dies of stomach cancer. Hey, you know, red flag, stop drinking that crap, you know, as I have cola, but it's Shasta Cola, you know, doesn't have all that crap in it. Anyway, we have Robert Bunsen died on this date in 1899. He was a German chemist who invented the Bunsen burner, died at 88. We all know what the Bunsen burner is. You know, it's camping equipment, you know, or scientific equipment, you know, stuff like that. Oh, my, my apologies. Robert Johnson, born in 1938, was a U.S. Delta Blues singer, guitarist, poisoned at 27. Who poisoned him? 
That's rude. 1940, we lost Henry Desgrange. He was a French cyclist, journalist, and founder of the Tour de France. Died at the age of 75. Oh, well, rest in peace, my friend. You know, the, the founder of the Tour de France. Dang. 1948, Babe Ruth died on the state. Aw, oh, man. Bye-bye, Bambino. He was a U.S. Baseball Hall of Fame slugger, MLB All-Star 1933 and 34, seven-time World, uh, World Series champion, 12-time American home run leader, 1918 through 21, 23 to 24, 26 through 31, Boston uh, Red Sox and New York Yankees, died of uh, nasopharynx cancer at the age of 53. So you're going to have to think, like, you know, sounds like larynx. So it sounds like it has to do like some kind of respiratory thing, I think. I'm not going to look it up. Because uh, I, yeah, I have respiratory problems of my own i got to take care of. So I've got to get this done. 1949, Margaret Mitchell, U.S. author, Gone with the Wind, died at 48. Well, now she is Gone with the Wind. So, the sand uh, of our lives. Or the days of our lives. Like, out, like sand in an hourglass. So is the days of our lives. If that quote is correct. 1956, uh, Bella Lugosi died on the stage. He was an actor, Dracula. Died of a heart attack at 73. That's kind of ironic, you know? So, yeah. I mean, that, that goes along the same vein as, you know, Christopher Reeve, who played Superman, uh, broke his spine in a horse accident. You can't be super if you can't walk, you know? Like, so. 1977, Elvis Presley died on the toilet. <laughs> on this date in history. He was a U.S. Mus musician, died at Graceland at the age of 42, with the official cause of death being cardiac arrhythmia, uh, which means he, uh, he was pushing too hard, and actually, you can do that. You can, like, push too hard on the toilet, um, and then, you know, blow out your heart. You know, it, it could be possible, especially if you're overweight, if you're obese, if you have, you know, pre-existing health conditions, you know, diabetes, blood sugar issues, you know, heart palpitations, you know, um, stuff like that. There's a plethora of things. Just be careful, okay? Don't die on the toilet. That's just embarrassing. 1979, we have John Deffenbacher, who was the 13th Prime Minister of Canada. The Conservative Party served from 1957 through 63, died at the age of 83. Why does he look like he's like, you know, what's with that? We have Idi Amin, died in 2003. He was a Ugandan dictator from 71 through 79. He killed an estimated 100,000 to 500,000 people, dying of a kidney failure himself uh, between 75 to 80. Uh, wow. What a garbage man, dude. That's a lot of people. 2006, uh, we have uh, Alfredo Stroessner. Uh, was a Paraguayan army officer, dictator, and the 42nd president of Paraguay from 54 through 89. Died of a stroke at 93. Good. Monster. Yeah. Aretha Franklin. Oh man. Uh, died on the state in 2018. That's just uh, four years ago. She was a U.S. singer-songwriter known as the Queen of Soul. Uh, R-E-S-P-E-C-T. And the first female performer inducted into Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1987. Died of pancreatic cancer at the age of 76. Man. Well, you know, rest in peace. Now you're singing to God and Jesus, you know. 2018 as well, we lost uh, Atal Bihari Vaj, uh, Vajpayee. He was an Indian politician, the 10th Prime Minister of India, uh, 1996 and 1998 through 2004. Died of a kidney infection at 93. E. Kidney infection, that doesn't sound good. Anyway, that concludes the show. Once again, you can check the underbar of the description for any links that you may find interesting, uh, which also includes but is not limited to everything Omni Coalition. You can go check out Soen's Twitch, the Omni Coalition's, you know, YouTube, BitChute, Rumble, you know, things like that. There's other, you know, links and for that. There's, you know, what we got in the underbar and all that stuff. Anyway, for your dose of vast events daily, we stream every day at 10 in the morning Pacific time. For all of you and all of us, I am A.O. Xander, and you are you. And until you catch us tomorrow, do not forget to look right and left at every intersection. Rate five thumbs and subscribe. Until then, toodles, let's go Brandon.